Hi, this is Nathan Oxenfeld with Integral Eyesight Improvement. Today I want to explain a little bit the difference between the right way versus the wrong way to perform your holistic vision practice. I get lots of questions and feedback from people who watch my videos in the comments below the videos or even through email. And one of the things that I hear from time to time is that people are doing the practices that I teach, but they might not be experiencing results. They might not be getting as much out of the practices as they're hoping. So today what I want to do is share with you some of my follow-up questions to people like that who may not be seeing the results that they want so that you can think about your own holistic vision practice to see if there's anything that you can change to actually get more results and better results. And some of the main things I'll be talking about are addressing your attitude, your mental state, and your mental focus and attention while doing those practices. Sometimes I refer to this to your eye-mind connection. So I'll explain that a little bit more in a moment. But the four questions I typically follow up that question of why am I not seeing the results are what practices are you doing? How often are you doing the practices? How are you performing the practices? and why are you performing the practices in the first place. So we're going to touch on each one of those briefly. So the first question is what practices are you doing? So you want to take a look at your vision practice. What things are you doing every day? Which practices are you doing more often, less often? Which practices are you skipping altogether? So you might want to make a list of all the practices that you know or the practices that you know you like um, or the ones that you do on a regular basis. And these could be practices that you have learned from my videos on YouTube, from my book, if you've gotten that, other books that you've read on the, on the subject, or maybe even some practices you've learned from a, a vision teacher or, or a class or a course that you've taken. And one trend that I have picked up on in having initial consultations with people or once I actually start working with students to actually teach them the Bates Method and guide them through this natural vision improvement process in person here in my office or online, when I originally ask people, okay, what practices do you know? What are you doing already? Almost every single one of them responds by saying, oh, the eye movements. And sometimes that's all they do, you know, looking up, down, left, right, around. So they're equating the vision improvement process to eye exercises. And as I've stated in previous videos and podcasts, that is not the correct way to approach this. Now, I'm not necessarily bashing the eye movements. I actually have a video of my own where I teach you how to do the yogic eye movements correctly. But what I make clear in that video is that those eye movements are not the Bates method. And they're not specifically designed to actually improve your vision or your visual acuity. They're more designed for getting more range of motion, more flexibility, more circulation to the eye muscles. But this brings our attention once again to the fact that your eye muscles are actually quite different than the other muscles in your body. So when you think about you know, improving your health or strengthening the other muscles in your body, you think about going to the gym, lifting weights, you know, and increasing the, the weights and trying really hard, putting forth a lot of effort. But your eye muscles are different. You want to think of them differently than other parts of your body. The reason they're unique is that they're both voluntary and involuntary. The majority of the eye muscle is voluntary. It allows you to do the eye movements to consciously move your eyes all around. But the portion of the muscle where it attaches to your sclera, or the white part of your eye, it actually transitions into smooth muscle tissue, which is involuntary muscle tissue. And that is the portion of the muscle that is responsible for accommodation, changing the shape of your eye, helping you focus. So when it comes to your Bates method practice, that is the portion of the muscle that you want to be addressing, not necessarily the long striated muscle tissue, which is what gets addressed when you do the eye movements, those eye movements don't guarantee relaxation, and relaxation is the only way to address the involuntary system, the automatic part of the eye muscles around the eyes and the ciliary muscles inside the eyes that change the shape of your lens. So 
first of all, you want to just take stock of what you know and what you are doing. Then you want to ask yourself, how often are you doing the practices? Because one of the keys to success in getting results in the Bates Method is the repetition and the frequency. So are you doing the practices enough? Are you doing them once a day, twice a day, three times a day? Are you doing them every other day, every third day, just once a week, or less frequently? So you need to make sure that the frequency is correct as well, so the right practices in the right amount of time. In my opinion, I think that everyone should be doing at least something every day for their eyes. Just like you might do something every day for your teeth, your oral hygiene, you're going to want to start taking as good care of your eyes as you would your teeth. If you brush your teeth or floss your teeth every day or twice a day, why not do the same thing for your eyes? Now keep in mind that there is such thing as too much practice. You may be doing it too often. And that kind of brings us into our third follow-up question, which is not how often are you doing the practices, but how are you performing them? So this brings us to this idea of your mental attitude, your approach of how you are performing the practices, and specifically the state of your mind when it comes to preparing for the practice, during the practice, and even after the practice. So think about when you're getting ready to perform some physical practices, some vision practices, what kind of mood are you in? What state of mind are you in? Are you relaxed? Are you stressed? Are you feeling rushed, like you have to squeeze these practices in? Are you feeling excited to do the practice, like in anticipation? Or is it more of a dread, like it's you're getting ready to do a chore that you don't necessarily want to do? Okay, so your, your mental attitude going into it can make a difference. And then once you're actually doing the practice, while you're swinging your body, while you're sunning your eyes, while you're palming, what is your mind state there? What are you thinking about? Is there an I-mind connection? In other words, is your mind focusing on what your eyes are doing or what your body is doing? Or is your mind elsewhere? Are you thinking about the next practice that you're going to do? Or are you thinking about something different altogether? If that's the case, then there is a disconnection between your eyes and your mind, between your vision and your thoughts. And if you're doing your practices with, without an, a connection between your eyes and your mind, there's not really a point of doing the practices. You're just kind of going through the motions. You may get a little bit of physical benefit, but remember, your vision is only about 10% physical. So if you're not involving your mind in the practice, you're ignoring the majority of your actual vision. So to make sure you're doing this correctly, you need to reconnect your eyes and your mind. You need to be paying attention to the vision practice, the task at hand. When you're swinging your body, don't be thinking about, okay, what am I gonna do after I'm done swinging? Or what am I gonna do later today? Or you're thinking about something that happened in the past. No, you wanna be thinking about your body swinging side to side, and you want your mind to be paying attention to that illusion of oppositional movement. When you're sunning your eyes, once again, you don't want your mind to just be wandering. You want to be staying present, stay in your body. Notice how the warmth feels on your eyes, the bright light, how that looks. Picture the oppositional movement of the sun. It's like the sun in the sky is moving in the opposite direction that your head is pivoting. When you're palming your eyes, where is your mind? A lot of people struggle with focusing their mind while palming. At first you may think that it would be easy because you're blocking out all the light, all the distractions from the outside world, <laughs> but sometimes when you shut out the outside world and it's just the inside, that's when your mind really starts going even wilder or starts wandering even more. It gets harder to harness and to focus. But remember, that is essentially the primary goal of the entire Bates Method is to achieve mental focus and mental relaxation which replaces the mental strain because the mental strain is the primary cause to physical strain which creates refractive errors and all kinds of vision problems. So the strain originates in the mind. When the mind is strained, 
the nerves are strained, and when the nerves are strained, then the muscles are strained. So if you're palming your eyes, sure, that might be a little relaxing on the surface, but if you're not able to activate your power of mental focus and visualization, then the palming practice loses a lot of efficacy as well. So when you're palming, once again, you want to practice coming into the present moment, feeling your body. You know, what, what does your body feel like? What part of your body feels comfortable, uncomfortable? Make sure you're in a comfortable, supported position so that your arms and shoulders aren't feeling tired. You don't want to be palming with your arms floating like I'm demonstrating here. I'm just doing it for a few seconds, so it's no problem. But when you palm for a minute, two minutes, five minutes, 20 minutes, you want to have support on your elbows, resting them on a surface or lying on your back using pillows and blankets. So tuning into bodily sensations, paying attention to your breath, which is sustaining itself throughout your entire palming practice. The expansion of your lungs on the inhale, the contraction of your lungs on the exhale. Tune into your heartbeat, the, the regularity of the blood circulating through your body. Or you can employ any kind of mental focusing technique, meditation technique, or a specific Bates method visualization. Or let's say you're palming and listening to music or a podcast or an audiobook. You want to keep paying attention to what you're hearing through your ears and maybe visualize the musicians playing their instruments or if you're listening to nature sounds visualizing the birds or the waves or whatever sounds you're hearing picturing those things appearing in your mind with your eyes closed or if you're listening to an audiobook or a podcast visualizing what they're describing or picturing the people speaking into the microphones so the moment you catch your mind disconnecting from your eyes or your vision that's your opportunity to gently bring it back, to refocus. You don't want to beat yourself up because that is the nature of the mind, is to move and travel and go from one thing to the next. So you don't want to punish yourself or punish your mind, try and force it to stay still. You want to just keep inviting it back to that original intention of your focus. Now once you're able to maintain this mental focus, that is when you get the most results from the practice. So swinging mindfully for one minute is going to give you more benefit than swinging mindlessly for 10 minutes. Same thing with the sunning and the palming and all of the other Bates method practices that you already know. You know, like the nose drawing. If you're just moving your head around, but you're not thinking about what you're looking at, if you're not mentally engaged, then there's no point in doing the nose drawing practice. So I want you to think about the difference between looking and seeing. Because you can look at something with your eyes, but if your mind isn't also looking at it, focusing on it, if your mind is disconnected thinking about something else, you don't actually see it. Only when your eyes and your brain, your mind, are working together when they're connected when you look at it with your eyes and see it with your mind is when you actually see it when the vision actually happens so in essence what I'm saying here is that clear vision is really only possible in the present moment if you're thinking about the past thinking about the future you have left the present moment you've left your body you've left your eyes behind to just look around but not really see what you're looking at so it really comes down to your mental attention and your intention. So when people reach out to me and express that they're not seeing the results, or if you're feeling that right now, it may be because you are approaching the practices incorrectly. Or not necessarily incorrectly, but there's just ways that you can tweak them and approach them more correctly to actually amplify the benefit and the results. And I want to just kind of reiterate this by reading a few quick little excerpts from this wonderful book by Ralph McFadden called See Without Glasses. He speaks to what we're addressing right now. So towards the beginning of the book, he writes, We must make clear that the purpose of this book is not to prescribe a few routine exercises to be performed a few minutes a day 
while for the rest of the 24 hours you relapse into your former habits, expecting the few minutes to act as a kind of charm. Nor is it to be regarded as a chore you must perform. It is to make you eye conscious and teach you how to use your eyes correctly so that you may attain the unconscious habit of doing the right thing. So it's not enough to just do your physical practices once a day or twice a day. What are you doing in between those practices? How are you using your eyes? So this is another point here, is that it's not an exercise routine, it's actually learning a new way to use your eyes all day and all night long. Because nobody really taught you how to use your eyes when you were growing up. You just kind of had to figure it out on your own. And sometimes you figure it out, sometimes you don't. And so, you know, it's never too late to learn, but you need to stick with it. You need to become eye conscious. You need to maintain that eye-mind connection and awareness of how you are using your eyes in different activities throughout the day. A little bit later in the book he writes, it must constantly be borne in mind that the purpose of every single technique and exercise is to secure relaxation. Only when that has been acquired is it possible to retrain the eyes for improved vision. That is why your attitude in doing the exercises is so important. If you can learn to do them with laughter and with joy, you will be helping yourself. So when you're doing your vision practices, when you're reading your eye chart, do you have a frown on your face or a smile? Or are you kind of neutral? When I was working with my eye chart to work on getting it clearer and clearer, I would realize when I was taking it too seriously and when I was trying too hard. I would literally start to develop a, a scowl because I wasn't happy with the blur of what I was seeing. But once I changed my attitude and started smiling and sometimes even laughing out loud when I would look at my eye chart, it actually changed the way that I saw it. The letters started becoming clearer and clearer by shifting my mental approach, by, by improving my attitude toward it as a joy, not a chore. Because you cannot try to see something. You can only see it. You can allow the light to enter your eye, but you can't force the vision to happen. And he further clarifies this point by saying, to try is to make an effort. To add another type of strain to the one from which you are already suffering. Never try to see. Relax the eyes and sight will enter your eyes as naturally and easily as air enters your lungs or sound your ears. It is only waiting to be received. You must not limit yourself to the practice of techniques. Correct seeing is not a chore. It is a delight. It is not something to be applied to a particular object or at a particular time. It is to become a part of everything you do at every moment in your life. So these are two very different ways to look at your eyes and your vision. Don't think about vision improvement as something that you have to achieve or work towards or put a firm effort into in order to make happen. As long as you're doing that, you're actually going farther away from the goal. Because like he says, you're just adding more strain to the eye strain that you, and mental strain that you already have. When you think about breathing, we're surrounded by oxygen in the air around us. We don't have to go around and search for air and, and suck it in and go look for our next breath. We allow the breath to happen automatically all day long because there is abundant air and oxygen around us. And it takes no effort to breathe. And when you think about your eyes and your vision, it's just the process of letting light into your eyes. And there is abundant light all around us. So don't think that you have to walk around searching for your vision. Light is the fastest measurable traveling phenomenon, the speed of light. You don't have to reach out to grab it because it's going to reach you. You must allow it to reach you and allow it to enter you through your eyes. 
So stop treating your eyes differently than you treat your nose or your ears or your tongue or your skin. It's just one of your senses. And the harder you try to control your senses, the worse job they're going to do, the worse job your mind is going to do at interpreting what that sensory organ is receiving. And I love how he points out to not just limit your understanding of your vision practice to the 10 or 15 or 20 minutes at a time that you're doing your vision routine once or twice or three times a day. You need to make your entire life become your vision practice. Every moment becomes an opportunity for you to relax your eyes, to relax your mind, to blink, to breathe, to shift, to centralize. The moment you try to focus or try to control your eyes and see, you lose the relaxation, you st start staring at something, you lose the shifting, and you lose your central fixation. You start dissipating your focus to a much larger area. So to wrap up, in the summary of his book, he writes, The method of visual education depends less on a system of techniques than it does a frame of mind. There are individuals who devote hours a day to stoical practice of the drills without improvement. The reason is that the root of the trouble is mental. A mere mechanical following of techniques will achieve nothing. The mind must be deeply involved in each step of the process. Almost daily, I observe how the first flash of normal vision brings hope, which engenders confidence which in turn produces the attitude of mind that leads to rapid improvement. At some time or other, we have all experienced the fatigue, the discouragement, the letdown feeling that makes us believe, I can't do it. I'm too tired to work another moment. I'm not getting anywhere. Something happens. A pleasant invitation. An unexpected telephone call. A shift of the attention to something else. And the fatigue drops away like a discarded coat. The discouragement is replaced with exhilaration. The letdown feeling gives way to hope. Something has happened in the mind and the body is reaping the benefit of it. There are people who persist in trying to regain their vision by assault, by a determined physical effort. Stop doing the work and let the light enter your eyes. You cannot improve your sight by, by forcing yourself to see. Only by wanting to see hoping to see. So this all deals with the question of how are you doing your vision practices? What is your mental attitude? What is your approach? Preparing for the practice, during the practice, and in between the practices. So this is something for you to really think about and contemplate and make sure you are doing correctly. Now the final follow-up question to ask is why are you doing the vision practices in the first place? So what is your reason for doing the practice? Why are you learning this? Why are you getting involved in holistic eye care? What are your specific vision goals? What are you working toward? So you want to get really clear about the why. Because on those days where you feel discouraged or feel like it's not working or you feel like you hit a plateau, if you can reconnect with your original intention of the motivation, the desire, the reason why you're going through this gradual self-healing process, that can help you stay on track and stay motivated. Because if you don't have that original why question answered, then you might be more likely to just give up and stop and lose that regularity, that frequency, that repetition that is so necessary for you to achieve the benefit and the results. And once again, I'm not just referring to the repetition of the physical practices. I'm speaking to the frequency and the repetition of the mental practices. Your mental focus, your mental clarity. And at first you may say, well, yeah, okay, I can do that. I can focus my mind. But as you're saying that, there may be a dozen different thoughts flying through your mind. So... This is actually the most challenging part of the Bates Method, of the vision practice, is the mental aspect. 
of letting those extraneous thoughts, those unnecessary, you know, multitasking, scatterbrain kind of things, kind of drift out more into the periphery of your mind, allowing you to really focus your mind on one thing best, one vision practice at a time, one task at school or at work at a time. Maintaining this mental focus is what enables you to really have that frequency that I'm talking about of being able to frequently centralize, frequently blink, frequently breathe, frequently shift. So don't take this as, a, as permission to stop doing physical practices. Those are still very important. But if you're only doing those and you're kind of glazing over the importance of focusing your mind and getting more powerful at visualizing, then you're only going to get 10% of, of the improvement. To get 100% of the improvement, you need to be working with both physical and mental and really paying attention to maintaining that I-mind connection. So let me know if any of this resonates with you or if you feel like you now have more clarity of what to do to tweak your vision practice to start getting more results. And let me know if it does help, if, if becoming more mindful and sinking more into the present moment, into your body, into your eyes, into your mind, actually does result in more flashes of clarity or more improved vision. Because it's been so great reading some of the comments and getting some feedback and emails from some of you who have been experiencing improvements. Seeing more clearly, dropping down to weaker glasses, getting those prescription numbers down, and even getting more independence from the glasses altogether. Not only does that make me feel really great that you're succeeding with it, but it also helps inspire other people who are watching these videos and wondering if this is worth their time to devote to, which I firmly believe that everyone should be spending some time taking better care of their eyes, better care of their minds, better care of their bodies, because the benefits really expand well beyond just your eyes and your vision, can really touch on many other aspects of your life. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you ask yourself what practices you're doing, how often you're doing your practices, how you are performing the practices physically and mentally, and why you are doing the practices as well. Feel free to share your answers in the comments, and I hope you have fun deepening your vision practice more and more into the mental realms of your vision.